Hey guys, and welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, today's going to be a quick and easy tutorial on how to make 3D extruded text in After Effects. Uh, I'll be using a uh, shape layer method of approaching this. Um, but it'll make it really simple, uh, really simple and really easy to do. Um, there are a few other methods uh, with a few perks, such as being able to change the text after um, doing the extrusion effect. Um, but I can go in, into that in a later tutorial today. I just want to keep it nice and simple and, of course, show you guys how to make some extruded text that looks pretty dang professional. Um, so the first thing you want to do is obviously open up After Effects on your computer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new composition. Uh, it can be 1920 by 1080, whatever you want. I'll leave it at that, 60 frames per second. And duration doesn't really matter since we're just creating an effect and we're not really animating anything today. Um, but I'll make it a nice round 10 seconds because my OCD cannot be satiated by anything else. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call it main comp as always. Um, that's my preferred naming strategy. And as you can see, we have a nice open canvas here for us to work with. Um, so let's just jump right into things. Let's go ahead and create some text that will, uh, that will be the base of our extrusion here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go and get my text tool. And I'm going to click around the center here and I'm going to center the text and I'll, I'll bring up the size later, but I'm going to leave it um, for now. And then I'm going to grab the font axis. You guys can search that up and download that font for yourself if you want something like uh, what I'm going to be creating today. It's a nice font and uh, a lot of other motion graphic designers like it as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put a nice old text right here. And of course, I'm going to make it something like black so we can see it for now. I'm going to change that in just a second. Um, and I think all these other parameters are good. You can, of course, change the kerning on the text if you wish. You can do this on a letter by letter basis. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and select everything and bring up the size a little bit. Let's go ahead and bring it up to something nice and big. Since we got such a big composition here and uh, that way we can work with it and really see what's going on here. So I'm going to hold down control and click and drag them, uh, around, uh, this text around the center. And uh, if you want to really be really exact with it, you can go up to window, align, and then of course align it to the centers of the composition just like that. So that is how we create the base text. Obviously not rocket science. I'm sure you've all done this before. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is, uh, I'll leave it as black for now. So what we, uh, the first step of course, uh, is to right click your text layer and say, create shapes from text. And that's going to duplicate it as a shape layer and hide our original text. Now our, our original text is still there. Of course I can reveal it by moving it out. That's our original text. Um, I'm gonna control Z that to put it back where it was. And uh, we're gonna leave it hidden for now. And what, what this did is it created a new shape layer. Let's go ahead and, uh, Give ourselves some more room down here. Why not? Um, to see what we're doing. So let's create a new shape layer with the contents of each letter. So we can go ahead and hide and show the T as you would expect, the E, the X, and the T, all like normal. And uh, what you can do is you can edit these as individual shapes. And of course, you can change the kerning, which is the spacing between text this way as well. So say I wanted to get fancy with it and connect the T and the X like that. Of course you can do that because they are separate elements and uh, that's just how, that's how stuff works here. Um, so that's pretty cool in itself, but what we're going to be doing is using this, uh, this shape layer and we're going to be using an inbuilt feature of shape layers called a repeater to be able to create that sort of uh, perspective look. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and do a little housekeeping here and change, uh, change up the spacing on the text to make it look real nice. Um, go ahead and select everything right there and bring it in. Maybe move it up a little bit. I don't know, just trying to make it look interesting. I don't think this, <laughs> actually I think I made it look worse, but uh, I'm not gonna nitpick over too much since this is just a tutorial. But I think that looks fine for the purposes right now. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to click into contents here and we're going to group all the letters together so that we can have one group with the entire word inside of it. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of the letters here, T, E, X, T, and drop them inside of that new group that we just created. I'm going to go ahead and name this uh, group T 
text word. And uh, there we go, everything's contained. And right now, as you can see, everything is considered a different shape. So the T, uh, the E, X, and T are all considered different shapes. So if we apply any effects after this, it's going to do it to each shape individually and then mash it together. But we want to actually merge the letters together before we start doing any extrusion. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to Merge Paths and make sure it's after the T, E, X, and T. And we're gonna make sure that this Merge Paths is set to, uh, set to Add. And what that does is it takes all, of this, all the individual layers that are above it and it basically smashes them into one, one uh, shape instead of these four. So now that's done, we can go ahead and close our text word group and uh, let's go ahead and do the magic. So what I'm gonna do here is create a new repeater and as you can see, it's pretty much made a mess of everything and that's because uh, repeaters have a default of offsetting each copy so you can bring up the copies, uh, each, copies off to, each copy off to the right and that's just the default. Uh, we don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and set the position offset to 0, 0. So now it's just going to make four copies in the exact same place as the original, so it doesn't really look like anything's being repeated. I'm going to bring this up to about 11 or 12. Uh, we can change that later. So right now, 12 copies are in exactly the same place, which is why it doesn't look like anything's changed. I can go ahead and turn this repeater on and off, and it doesn't really look any different. However, if we offset the position, by, uh, this is these are a pair of into a uh, pair of um, X and Y position so the zero and the X and the zero and the Y so we're gonna offset it by uh, one per copy so each new copy is gonna get bumped down one pixel um, and as you can see let me cross copies oh, there's all there's a uh, one one being added each time so each new copy we have 29 right now 28 um, is going to be bumped down one, and this creates a sort of extrusion effect, which is really kind of neat. Um, so that's that's the basis of it. So I'm going to leave it around 45 right there, and uh, let's go ahead and do a little bit of aesthetic styling. So right here in the text word group, we have a stroke and a fill. The fill is pretty self-explanatory. If we uh, drop that down, we can set it to fill white or I like, kind of like this kind of salmon salmon color right here, which I think is kind of neat. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click okay, and that is our fill. But as you can see, there's no differentiation between the extrusion and then the font face there. It's all the same salmon color. And to understand how we're going to color the extrusion separately, we need to understand uh, how, how the repeater works. Basically, it takes the original text image, leaves it at the top, and makes each copy beneath it, and it'll apply the change as defined by the transform uh, options down here. So we're bumping it down one each time. So if we add a stroke, we can see what happens. Um, since it's bumping it down one pixel each time, the only part you're seeing, uh, the only part that's being exposed is the few edge pixels on the edge of the text, which in this case happens to be our stroke, which is why when we turn on our stroke and make it a stroke width of, um, I guess one in this case, um, it indeed uh, colors the extrusion pretty much, which is really neat. Um, I'm gonna bring up the stroke to about three because we're gonna be doing some stuff later that will uh, require it to be that. But as you can see, when we change the color of the stroke to like a like a bright or maybe a dark um, kind of reddish, uh, this is really up to you. This is a personal preference, of course. Um, ooh, I found a color that looked good for a second and then I lost it. Um, there we go. That looks kind of nice. And as you can see, um, that is how we're going to create the extrusion. Uh, color differentiation there and uh, you can go ahead and edit these later but I'm gonna leave them as they are right now for the sake of this tutorial and if we want to create a perspective look um, we have to go down to the repeater and we bumped it down by one each time but uh, if we also change the scale each time um, each each for each new copy it'll create a sort of perspective look now don't do it by much so what I'm gonna do is instead of a hundred percent 
um, which is no change in scale. I'm going to bring it down to 99.8. And that's just going to do the simple effect of making it, uh, making each new copy. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to 40. Um, these are just a whole bunch of stacked layers. And that's going to bring down the scale by 99.8% of the last one each time it copies it. So that creates the sort of effect of, of course, doing this. And as you can see, when we bring down the scale a whole lot, it kind of gives this kind of like popping out of the page look kind of like, whoa, what's going on there? Um, but you also start to see what's going on. <laughs> you see this little stroke and um, it doesn't really sell the effect too well because it doesn't look like a solid extrusion anymore. It just looks like a whole bunch of pieces of paper stacked on top of each other, which is not exactly what we want. Um, so if you do want to go this extreme, with the extrusion, of course, you can bring it out too, which I think is kind of interesting, um, which is not what we're going for. So, um, if you want to do this, you might want to bring it down a little bit or something. You know, uh, I'm just trying to show you what can be done with this sort of effect. Um, so, if you do want to end up doing something like this, which is super crazy and weird looking, um, you're going to want to bring up your stroke width to kind of cover up those inconsistencies and of course it's not perfect this method is very hacked together which is why you're not going to always get a perfect result but for very basic um, perspective so 99.8 I found to be a magic number um, it really doesn't look bad at all and of course you can animate this like any other layer in After Effects you can even animate the copies right so you can make it kind of start as 2d with one copy and then kind of like woo you know um, kind of bring it out like that uh, which I think is really neat and of course you can go to town with any of the other shape layer operators um, and kind of create your own text now if you want to uh, get even a little bit more fancy you can go up here to layer styles and create a gradient overlay which is what I like to do with mine and if you drop down into this gradient overlay you can go ahead and edit the over or edit the gradient and I like to smush these two black and white colors together to create a hard edge. And once I've done that, I usually like to put the black on the bottom. So I will go ahead and reverse this gradient. And of course, bring down the gradient opacity to eight, eight or so. Um, and change the blending mode to overlay, which I think looks the best. And you can go ahead and change the opacity to your liking. I'm gonna leave it at 10 or so and you see that it creates this sort of glint and I mean the the rest is up to you uh, you can add some glow some inner glow and it really is or inner shadow I, I guess um, and you can really just create this how you like it but that is the basis of how to create extrusions I guess you would say in After Effects and it's really not as hard as it sounds when you really break it down to its core elements it's really it's really just faking perspective, which isn't all that hard in After Effects when when you understand how to go about it in the correct way. Um, so hopefully this helps you guys uh, create some 3D text for whatever project you're working on. I'm not sure what this could be used for. I use it in intros, but I'm sure you can use it for text templates for creating um, lower thirds and Premiere or something. Or, you know, really the sky's the limit. That's what I love about After Effects. You can really do whatever you want. So that's that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'm going to be trying to do a, a mini tutorial every day. Um, and if I miss a day, I want you guys to literally find me on Twitter at TGodDesigns and just spam me with just like, you failed me. <laughs> you failed me, Rio. Um, now, th this is, this is going to have to go both ways. Like, I'm going to try and create a mini tutorial each day but I also need you guys to like feed me tutorial suggestions like constantly like it can't stop like <laughs> this, this can't stop you cannot stop giving me tutorial ideas otherwise this will fail um, so leave tutorial suggestions in the comments and uh, I guess let's start this thing off let's kick it into high gear guys so yep if this helped you leave a like uh, maybe share it with uh, people on Twitter or Facebook. I don't know. Maybe your grandma might enjoy this this tutorial. Maybe your grandma likes After Effects and she really needs to know how to create extruded text. 
you gotta you gotta share the love so uh, liking this video if you have your Twitter account connected will automatically share it on Twitter so go ahead and do that um, basically just share the love I love helping you guys and um, anything you can do to give back is greatly appreciated um, but that's pretty much that I will see you guys tomorrow I guess for another tutorial don't stop with the ideas I this this is this is important this is a key this is a key um, but uh, yeah thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video all right take it easy Peace.